blessing to me to be able to serve with quality people like uh, David Hossa. I hope you consider yourself fortunate as well to have his leadership with this particular course and any impact that he has on your educational experience and your career development there too. So uh, realize your fortunates there too. I, I'm just going to really kind of be conversational with you. Those of you that know me, and I look around the room, and I do know several of you uh, know that uh, I'm one that enjoys the one-on-one the -on -one type of conversation there. I like to uh, see what your needs are and be able to share in any way that I might be able to assist with your, your development there too. I will start by giving you some background on me just so that you might consider all of my experiences and be able to develop those thoughts in your mind if there are any similarities or dissimilarities uh, with what your experiences have been to this point in your life that you might be able to take my experiences and in developing that correlation with or without uh, your experiences kind of lay somewhat of a blueprint for the days ahead as you develop your careers. I will say this, uh, the opportunity is certainly there uh, for you all coming through the, this academic program at the University of West Georgia. So I hope you realize that you do indeed have uh, some very positive factors to work with educationally as you step out into to the, your career in the years to come. Uh, with me, uh, I was raised in a small town, very, very small town. Uh, I want to find out a little bit more about you all. How many of you, my, the town I was raised in was less than 15,000 people in population. If you were raised in a town less than 15,000 in population, would you raise your hand? Okay, one, two, three, so a good percentage of, of you based on the number of us that are in the room. If, if your community was 25,000 or less, raise your hand. Okay, so there's an additional, okay, an additional couple, three of you, okay, all right. If your community in which you were raised was 50,000 in population or greater, may I see your hand there too? Okay, all right. So. We do have a good cross-section here for which to consider. So you're about, uh, it looks like 60 to 70 percent of you raised in a small town, some 30 to 40 percent of you in a, in a municipality there. So I was raised in a very, very small community called Carrollton, Georgia. At the time that I was, I was coming through and kind of getting my feet on the ground there too, we were, you know, naturally much smaller than we are even today there. Uh, I can remember as a child, my dad taking me and buying my first baseball glove. Where did we go? Did we go to Hibbets? Did we go to Walmart? Uh, did we go to Academy Sports and Outdoors? A proud partner of West Georgia Athletics, I might add. Or did we go to the local hardware store? That's what we did. We went to Cook's Hardware uh, in Carrollton and bought my first baseball glove at the local hardware store. That's how small this community was. Uh, we knew all of the uh, pharmacists at the, at the drug stores throughout the community. You knew them all. Being the oldest of seven children, we visited them very, very often there to, uh, to get that remedy that would take care of either myself or one of my younger brothers and sisters there. There was no Walmart uh, in town. Uh, we knew everyone. My dad, and it wasn't that he was anything special, but my dad, in those days and times, could pick up the phone and get a loan just by calling the banker. Things have changed. But that's the kind of town that I grew up in here in Carrollton, a very small community. Uh, one that we knew everyone and everyone knew us and hopefully that was good, sometimes it wasn't. You couldn't run and hide from mom and dad in this community back then. Uh, I developed my affinity for athletics probably right here on this campus. And uh, the way I started was uh, in 19, I believe I pinpointed it 
uh, here a few few days ago. It was, I think it was in 1962. Now, don't don't start doing math here, okay? <laughs> but uh, in 1962, I was a six or seven year old kid. So yeah, go ahead and do the math. Uh, but I developed my affinity for athletics as a bat boy here at what was then West Georgia College. And the baseball field at that time uh, was real close to where Richards College of Business is today. So I was shagging foul balls, shagging fly balls during practice, toting bats around. And now as I walk down the hallway in the athletic operations building where my office is, I see five to six guys plaques hanging on the wall in that center hall called the Hall of Fame that I was their bat boy for back in those early 60s. So I, that's how I kind of got into athletics. That's when I remember thinking this is really neat to kind of be in, in this environment and in, in this arena there. Uh, I got into youth sports just like most people that you know are in this room there. Every one of us probably played. Uh, in a recreation department setting or some type of a youth athletic program growing up there. Uh, my teammates, when I was a child, coming up through the one recreation department that was in this community. Now keep in mind, uh, I haven't shared this with you, but I grew up in the county, so to speak. I was not raised in the city limits of Carrollton. Uh, the home that I grew up in, if you know where the Taco Bell is out there close to Walmart. Uh, that's, that's the neighborhood that I kind of grew up in. But at that time, there was nothing but hay fields, uh, little guys on bicycles, little boys sneaking into the woods to smoke rabbit tobacco while mom and dad weren't looking. Those were the kind of things that I grew up, that was sort of the environment there. There was one recreation department uh, there, and I participated in that. Now. The thing that was unique for me, and the reason that I share that with you, is all of the young guys that I grew up playing little baseball and football and basketball with as a child, and on into the, the middle, middle school grades, when I came out, we broke the huddle when I uh, got to a junior varsity level. We broke the huddle, and I came up to the line of scrimmage there for the first play, and I looked across and all the guys wearing a different color of jersey across the line of scrimmage were my friends. These were guys that I had played with all my life, and for some reason they decided that they were going to wear a different color jersey. But that's sort of the experience that I had coming up, you know, as a child and through my middle grades there. Uh, in high school, I mentioned to you that I, that I was in the county school uh, here in this area. At that time, again, very small town, very small town. It was not rare for uh, a young guy or a young lady to letter in possibly four sports, four years back in those days. And that was kind of the experience that I had. We played football, we go right straight from football to basketball, right from basketball to baseball. And then what I would do is I would practice uh, baseball play baseball, but if we had a track meet on a day where it was baseball practice, then I would participate in the track meet as well there too. So it was, it was so small that we had to basically just kind of bind together to be able to make ends meet in the small school that I went to back in those days. Uh, I come to West Georgia, and I, just like so many students that came to West Georgia then, and perhaps some come to West Georgia now uh, with the same mindset. My intent was to come here, get a couple of years, do, do my core here, and then transfer to the University of Georgia to get my degree. I uh, got into school here, um, thought, man, this is, this is great. I was used to the long days of going, uh, checking in at high school early in the morning going through the school day, practicing whatever sport it was that you played in the afternoon, getting home at 7 to 7.30 at night there. And then I go to college here, and I go to three one-hour classes on a daily basis. I thought, man, this, this is great. You know, three hours a day, I, I've got this money. Well, it took me 
we were on the quarter system back then here at West Georgia. It took me, uh, I think it took me three, three quarters to get that little probationary sentence off the bottom of my report card there. So it was a rude awakening for me uh, with that first quarter that this really wasn't as easy as I thought that it was going to be there. So uh, that's, that's what, uh, what my first experience was. West Georgia at that time had uh, not a sport management degree as such, but it had a recreation management degree. So my major was in municipal recreation. And we had one professor uh, on the staff at that time that every one of my major's courses were taught by this one professor, Dr. David Dugan. Dr. Dugan uh, is a former athletic director here at West Georgia. His plaque now hangs on the wall in that center hallway at the Athletic Operations Building as a member of the Hall of Fame here at West Georgia. Dr. Dugan now has two grandsons that play on the football team at West Georgia, and he has a son that is recently just re-elected as a state senator here in the state of Georgia. Dr. Dugan was a great leader and a great teacher. And keep in mind, I started to West Georgia with full intent of transferring to the big school there in Athens. When I got into my major's courses, and I realized that I had someone that was a true gem as the professor that could lead me into uh, my business career, then I, in, a, in the ratio that I had as far as teacher to student, I realized that the wise thing to do, even at a young age like that, the rock wise thing to do was for me to stay put and seize upon the opportunity and to capture the educational experience that was laid right there before me for me to just take hold of it and benefit from it. So that's what I did, maintained it here, stayed at West Georgia, and got my degree here. There weren't any athletics uh, here that I, that I participated in. We didn't have a football team uh, at West Georgia back then, and, and so I was not able to participate. I probably wouldn't have been able to anyway. I was one of those special athletes. I was small, but I was slow. And so I would probably not have made it with the football program here at West Georgia, even if we'd have had one there. But I did a lot of volunteer work uh, while I was going to school here. Uh, in the afternoons, keeping in mind that I'm, I'm still taking those three one-hour classes a day and thought, boy, this is a breeze. But I started doing volunteer work with local youth organizations, uh, leading, uh, basically, coaching youth teams, youth athletic teams, formulating youth leagues. I uh, primarily did a lot of work in, in one of the local churches. Now, there were no resources to work with. We had youth basketball leagues playing out, outdoors on an asphalt court with the, with the old goals that had the chain link for the net there. Uh, that's where we started. We had softball leagues that were in the backyard of a local business that had a makeshift softball field. We started all kinds of programs like that for the young people in this area on a volunteer basis. And those things seemed to develop. Were there failures? Yes. Uh, were there disappointments? Yes. But we learned from those things there, and we tried to take our disappointments and our failures and put those together and learn from those and try to generate some success. All of those leagues and those functions that we began during those days at West Georgia actually took hold and became some of the programs that we see in our local recreation departments today. They actually took those things over after all of us were out and gone in different directions there too. So really feel kind of good that that volunteer uh, experience that, that I and some of my other students here at West Georgia had uh, helped be somewhat of a catalyst for some of the youth organizations and functions that you see here in this community today. Um, my volunteer with one of the churches that I mentioned to you here, volunteer work became full time. I did that for the last year that I was here at West Georgia, uh, simply to work with the young people, trying to, to gain some experience, uh, trying to help some young people that I saw 
perhaps needed uh, someone to care about them and to, to lead them in maybe a certain direction there. Uh, so the last year that I was here at West Georgia, uh, the volunteer work that had led up to that point became full time when this organization asked me to come and become a member of their staff. And so we did that uh, and I continued to do that for another year after graduation. Now I'm that old classic story in that I married uh, the young lady that was my high school sweetheart there too, and she was, I'm, I'm going to brag on her a little bit, she was a beauty queen, she was in those days, she was the FFA sweetheart and went on into national competitions out in Kansas City in the bread basket out there too, so uh, I was, I was again, a very blessed young man in, in a lot of different ways there too. Uh, out of the blue, I'm sitting in my office one year post-graduation and there's a call uh, from a church in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, my degrees in recreation, my focus even with this smaller local church in this area was recreation and athletic administration and trying to be able to develop culture amongst the young people here and that they had some valuable positive resource to participate in. Get this call just out of the blue, unexpected. Uh, unsolicited from this this larger church in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, anybody know what's what's king in Lexington? What's what's king in Lexington, Kentucky? University. University of Kentucky. And at University of Kentucky, what is the king activity there? Basketball, Basketball hoops. There, this this church that I was called to be a part of their staff was three blocks north of Rough Arena, which is where the, the cats play basketball. Again. Things happen. You just get very fortunate there in the way things fall into place sometimes there. Our playing surface at the facility that I administered was of a different nature than the playing surface in Rough Arena. Anytime Kentucky would go to play David's alma mater at Tennessee or a Florida or an Auburn that had a different type of surface, playing surface, that we had at our facility, they would come and practice in our, our gym two, three days leading up to going on the road to play in these different different places. Well, I got to know those, those guys, the coaching staff, the players. Uh, I got to learn by watching them how they administered a collegiate athletic program from the sense of the basketball program. And Kentucky basketball, of course, was big business. And so there was a lot to learn. There was a lot to acknowledge and to observe. Uh, not that I was on the inside by any means. Nowhere near being on the inside of that operation. But I was uh, entitled to observation. And I learned a lot by the way they interacted player to coach, coach to the university, university to community, all of those different uh, facets of operation. I was able to, to observe that. Again, I'm there. In Lexington, my wife and I, uh, another knock at the door comes three years later. It was a private business that had sprung up here in Carrollton. Back in that day, uh, racquetball was coming into its zenith. I mean, just ultimately popular uh, here. And they had built uh, a facility here in town that, that hosted six racquetball courts. And the phone call to me was, Eddie, we would like for you to come back home and manage and operate this facility and this business for us. Well, when mama calls you to come home, sometimes that's, that's a strong, strong allure. And so we accepted that call, even though we loved our experience in Kentucky and had no reason to leave there whatsoever. So we come back and uh, uh, began as a manager operator of that with the prerequisite for me returning to Carrollton that if this corporation ever gave thought to selling that business, that they would give us the first right of refusal to purchase it ourselves. Well, two years later, they gave us that opportunity. We purchased that business and it became a 25 year experience for us to operate, to own and operate what is now a local uh, athletic club again. Another knock at the door. I'm in, I'm in my office some 25 years later, and I guess it's every small businessman's dream. A corporation had formed and came, and as they say, 
They made us an offer that we really couldn't refuse. And so at that point, my three children, who, my, who we're very blessed with, were entering into their college years. And this came 